Good morning, everyone, or good evening, as it could be. I'm broadcasting from Possum Creek, which is the old home of Paul Hogan, who is of Crocodile Dundee fame. And what I, he's my next door neighbor, what he was until he sold the property a few years ago. I just want to share my screen with you. I've just got a, an ability to share screen, so I'm excited to use it. So I'm going to show you my computer program called Anatomy, Complete Anatomy 2020. And so what I'm going to do is add some muscles to it. And I want to show you something really interesting about how the hip flexors relate to the diaphragm. So here you see now the first layer of muscles, deep layer of muscles. I'm going to zoom in on it. And there's the diaphragm, this big dome-shaped muscle under the ribs. When the diaphragm uh, contracts on inhalation, it moves downwards. So if I just go back to showing my body, where is it? So there is my body. So when the diaphragm, which sits like this here, when it moves downwards, it flattens from a dome shape to a flat shape. And as that goes down like that, the um, the, the volume of the chest expands, so you get this, imagine this is the chest, this is the diaphragm, the diaphragm moving down makes this suction. If I pull my hands apart, you hear like a suction effect. And that suction is what makes air come in your nose or, or your mouth if they are open. So the mistake many people think is that when you expand your chest or when you move your diaphragm down, it will... Uh, you know, also rather when you breathe in, it's going to make your chest or abdomen expand. But actually it's when your abdomen expands or when your chest expands that air comes in. So air is either going to come in because you make your chest expand or because you make your abdomen expand like this. That's the diaphragmatic movement here or the chest movement here. So the mistake people think is that when you make your chest, so when you breathe in, your chest will get bigger, or when you breathe in, your abdomen will get bigger. But actually, it's the opposite way round. When you make your volume expand, that will make air come in, provided the holes in your face, your nose and mouth, are open. And uh, the diaphragm is very special. It's what you use when you're sleeping at night time, when you're at rest. And it's the diaphragm that you should use as, uh, as the most important muscle of breathing. And even when you breathe in the chest, it's important to have breathed with your diaphragm first. So the diaphragm moving downwards is a diaphragmatic contraction. So this is a normal muscle. Imagine my hands are a normal muscle joining, say, one bone and another bone together. When a muscle contracts, it tries to shorten and it brings the muscle into a shortened state. So when the diaphragm contracts, it sits like this below my rib cage, it contracts by going from a dome shape to a flat shape. And a contraction of a muscle will be stimulated if you pull on that muscle. So same like when you go to the doctor and the doctor takes your knee and gives it a whack, you get a knee jerk reflex because a sudden contraction of any muscle with an external force, like a hammer, or one limb pulling another, or one muscle pulling another, will cause a stretch reflex activation of the muscle you're talking about. So in this case, if we look at the diaphragm, let me go back to my view of the diaphragm. So here you can see the diaphragm is a muscle like that, but if I add an extra layer of muscles here, now you can see this important other muscle called the psoas muscle, which is the very stiff hip flexor muscle. So this hip flexor, which is you know, profoundly more tight in the modern world because people sit on chairs for 5 to 15 hours a day, what it does is it joins on with your diaphragm. See, it goes right up there and it goes from the inner thigh across the front of the hip and it joins onto all the lumbar vertebrae, and then it joins onto the region around the kidneys and the diaphragm. So you see the diaphragm, now in yellow, and the psoas are connected, which means that when the psoas, let me see the action nerve supply, okay, when the psoas is activated, when the psoas becomes tense, it will pull on your diaphragm, which means that I'll go again to my body so you can see me here. 
that if I'm in this position here, you can see my leg is hips. This is when you are sitting. This muscle, your psoas muscle, is much shorter. When you extend the hip, the psoas becomes lengthened. And when the psoas becomes lengthened, that causes a pulling action on your diaphragm. And so the diaphragm responds with a stretch reflex activation and moves downwards. So the end result then is if you are standing up and then from a standing up position you bend the knees, straighten the knees, bend the knees, come up and down. Every time you bend the knees the psoas muscle, muscle shortens. Whenever you straighten the knees and extend the hips the psoas becomes lengthened. And when it lengthens it pulls on the diaphragm and gives a stretch reflex activation, which means that whenever you straighten up like this, it will make you breathe in. Whenever you bend the knee downwards, the diaphragm relaxes again, moves upwards, and you're more likely to exhale. So what it is, it's a mistake to think that when you straighten up, you should breathe in. No, let the breath happen by itself. And if you synchronize this, with a movement, so when you ex extend your hips, you also lift your shoulders, then the hip extension will cause a diaphragmatic inhale, the shoulder elevation will cause a chest inhale. So if all you did was go like this, up and down, say six seconds up and six seconds down, while staying completely relaxed, you'll be breathing in with your diaphragm and your chest at the same time, which is like a complete breath. Now, it doesn't have to be a full breath, and you don't want to do it too fast, otherwise you get the effects of hyperventilation. And hyperventilation, breathing more than normal, will cause reduced blood flow to the brain, reduced transfer of oxygen from your lungs to your blood, it will hypersensitize your nervous system, and cause less oxygen to transfer from your red blood cells, the oxyhemoglobin, into your body cells. And when there's less oxygen in your body cells, you're more prone to disease. And also you have 19 times less energy when you've got no oxygen in the cells. So a, a sugar molecule, if it's converted to energy, can be converted either with oxygen or without oxygen. If you convert one sugar to energy without oxygen. You get two energy currencies, two energy molecules called ATP. But if you convert, metabolize, burn sugar in the presence of oxygen, you get 38 molecules of ATP, 38 uh, energy units, 19 times as much energy. So it's very important not to overbreathe, but it's also important to understand how the movements that we do affects our breathing. So this simple movement like this, going from bent legs with hips shortened to extended legs with hips, extended hips like this, where the front of the hips are lengthening and shortening, that will stimulate a diaphragmatic breath and lifting the shoulder up and down will cause the chest to expand. So as you pull your shoulder up, it makes the chest lift up. So if all you did was lift up for six seconds like this, and then six seconds down like this, it's going to make very slow breathing, provided you don't think of the breath. And you just breathe naturally, it will regulate your breath if you are a relaxed person. And the more you do it in a relaxed way, the better it is. Now, better than just going up or down, make your joints move in circles. So rather than just bend the knee, straighten the knee, on the way down, I go forward and down. On the way up, I lead from my lower back and I go backward and up. So I'm making a circle with my hips. And when I come up with my shoulders, I come up by moving my shoulders down and back, up and forward. So I'm making a circle with my shoulders, a circle with my hips, and even further, I can make circles with every other part of my body as well. And when I'm doing this then, the breath becomes much more complete. It's a very simple exercise, but my recommendation is get off the chairs you're on. Every hour, get up off your chair and do something really simple. Roll your shoulders, lift the hips up and down. It's a really good exercise. I've only got a short time to have a live today, so I'm going to go now. I want to go do some other work, but I just wanted to say hello, and I just wanted to share my screen with you and uh, 
Have a fantastic day. Share good energy and loving information inside your body by making blood flow while remaining calm. Cardiovascular work is the key to help your body stay good, but people overdo the cardio and they don't do enough of the vascular. Get your blood vessels to move without your heart racing. Get your blood vessels to transfer blood through the body without making your heart race. How do you do this? Well, stop blocking the flow of blood. Tense less, stretch less, breathe less, think less, eat less. How do you encourage the movement of blood through the body? Move actively, use your own muscles. Don't use external forces. Move from the core, don't lock your core. Breathe naturally as a base breath. Don't force your breath, don't over tense, don't over breathe. And move fluidly and you'll find you get such a much better result. I love you all. Move actively, move from the core, breathe naturally, move fluidly. Check out my other posts if you like and uh, love you all and talk to you soon.